Welcome back to Piers Morgan Uncensored. Controversial influencer Andrew Tate's uncensored return last night. It's been viewed over a million times so far on YouTube alone. His fans call him a misunderstood maestro of masculinity. His critics say he's a malignant, malicious misogynist. I think he's probably somewhere between the two, but last night, once again, he divided opinion. I do mean what I say. If I were to see a girl on a private plane on Instagram, for example, I would assume that a man put her on that private plane. I would not assume she bought it herself. What if it was... Perhaps Harriet? that what? makes me misogynistic. What about the Afghan women? It's nothing to do with me on any level. You don't have a view? I have a view. My view is that people naturally gravitate towards law and order, and if you didn't have the Taliban, you'd have different warlords operating in lawlessness, and there would be no way to prevent your store, your market stall, getting completely robbed by someone with an AK-47, and people are going to gravitate towards a form of law and order. America left, they left the power vacuum, and the power vacuum is now full. What about their treatment of women? I mean, only well, tonight, only tonight, they have banned any women from going to university. Fantastic. Let's get the feminists to go and teach them a lesson. The feminists are so tough. And they stand up and say they can do anything a man can do. Let's arm them up and send them to Afghanistan. I'm sure they'll fix it. Why can't you just say on that, you know what, it's completely wrong? Because it's not my point. It's, I don't understand. But it, makes you, it makes me think. It'll make your critics think that you don't think it's wrong. They could ban all men. They could ban all short people. But they're people. not. They're only banning women. Correct. They could ban all short people. They could ban all people with long hair. And it, None of it's anything to do with me. So they can do whatever they want. I'm not going to go to war with the Taliban. Do you think one. you're a misogynist? Absolutely not. I'm not a misogynist on any level. This is one of those buzzwords they throw at and they just throw at people randomly. Homophobic, racist, misogynist, they just throw it out at people. Well, joining me now is Talk TV contributor Esther Kraku and a trembling broadcaster and journalist <laughs> Jenny Kleeman. I haven't watched the full interview yet, but just looking at these two ladies, I can already tell who is going to be the biggest headache. I mean, just look at her. She looks like a Karen. It was no, did you? I asked a question. Did you spit your gum out onto the ground? My dog is going to walk over there and eat that gum. Why don't you walk you your dog on your side of the street? Sorry? What's the I'm problem? sorry? Okay. I am done with you. Where did she go? I don't where, understand. Like, she did get hit. Did she not get crazy. hit? crazy. Like, where? No! Or should I say, Karanos, the final boss, of Karen's. The ride is not even over yet and the bitch already wants to speak with the manager. She probably slept with so many dudes that she is starting to look like one. Oh, he God. needs some milk. Recoiling in horror. Let's start oh. with you, Jenny. Oh. Um, <sighs> he's, he's not your idea of a role model. Well, no, he's not. I, I, th I see him as a symptom of a problem rather than a solution to it. I can understand why... What's the problem that he's the, the symptom The for? problem is, I think, a lot of young men uh, feel that nobody is speaking up for them. Mm. In a culture where we are encouraged to have identity politics, the only identity that isn't a good identity is a young man or a mm. young white male. He talks in a very straight way uh, and he gives straight answers to uh, some questions, which I think he, he gives very wrong answers to. Um, but I find him repellent. I think he, he talks about... He talk, he, basically creates straw men that he destroys. So he will uh, depict feminism as a particular kind of thing, a kind of man-hating thing, which it isn't. Well, it is um, for some feminists. For a small number of feminists. Yeah, I mean, I so there say. are some radical feminists who genuinely there, there hate men. There definitely are. There definitely there are. are. But most people know that feminism is about just thinking that everyone should have equal opportunities regardless of... of yeah, and one thing we sex. know from Afghanistan, and these, these heartbreaking scenes yeah. today in Afghanistan of weeping female students who couldn't go to university and men actually in Afghanistan then going out in protest for them. I mean, really heart-rending scenes, Esther, here, of these, these young women in Afghanistan, weeping because they've been told they cannot now continue their education. And then you've got male students walking out in protest. Very brave thing to yeah. do. A bit like we saw in Iran with the men protesting in support of the women being oppressed there. This is where he slightly lost me last yeah. night, Andrew Tate. There are, there are a lot of things he says which I understand why young men, you feel a bit lost, why they gravitate yeah. to his confidence. He's very good at building business. He's proven it. He's made himself extremely rich doing it. A lot of what he says about masculinity and stuff, I, I completely would sign up to, actually. Yeah. And his confidence can help people. 
But when he was not prepared to condemn this 10th the Taliban barbarian. for that, yeah. because that to me is an open and shut case. If you don't condemn it, then I'm afraid you've got a problem. And it's yeah. not about sending feminists in to go to war. It's ridiculous. As I pointed out to you... Which I actually of... do think is a valid point. <laughs> well, <laughs> well it's, it's fine, but a lot of women do actually fight in the armed forces. Yeah. So I think, the I idea think, that none of them do is, is also nonsense. I think he was using that to kind of attack the more extreme forms of feminism that, that says, you know, women can do anything a man can do. And he was using that as an example. Yeah. But I do think, you know, you lose people when you refuse to outright condemn sort of 10th century barbarians like this. Um, but I, I don't think... When he said it has nothing to do with him, I think he's not willing to get into dicey territory in that way. But it's like, you speak in such absolute terms. Why Do you think not? he's a misogynist? I don't think he's a misogynist, no. I don't think so. I mean, a misogynist means somebody who hates women. Yeah, I, I don't, don't think, think he hates women. I do I think, think he hates women. I think he thinks women think he are nothing. I think he would not want, know what to do with you and I, Esther, because he does not know how to deal. He gives interviews to people like you or to Hugo Rifkin. He'll give interviews to yeah, men. If you think Andrew Tate is a misogynist, you also probably think that the government cares for you and has a purpose to help you. Bollocks! The world is in desperate need of guys like Andrew Tate, a guy who is a motivational and yet an inspirational force for the world. A man who tells the truth. A man who tells you like it is. But unfortunately, when you tell the truth nowadays, it's considered misogynistic. I was a four-time kickboxing world champion. For 12 years, I trained five hours a day, six days a week. And I was motivated to train probably about 25% of the time. Mm. The rest of the time I went because I am disciplined. If I wake up and I'm unhappy, I will do the exact same things as if I am happy. I will go to the gym the same. I will work the same. How I feel has no impact on how I live my life. We're grown-ups and we have responsibilities and we have problems and we have pressure. And you don't necessarily have to be happy to perform. You know, and, and happiness will come at the end of the performance anyway. A lot he of women I've spoken to about... Yeah, but, a lot of women, but he's done interviews with women. I've seen them before on YouTube. Yeah, but he's, he's very polite he, and respectful. Yeah, and women do, a lot of women yeah. do like him. Exactly. There are a lot of women who don't know him who seem yeah. to hate him, yeah. ironically. Um, but I'm not sure it's as clear-cut I mean, as I, the, he's I a misogynist. I, I don't think he's a misogynist. And I have a brother who's probably within his target demographic, mm. 23. And I can understand why his message would resonate with him because mm. it's normal. I can understand it's, why and it's normal, exactly, for I young just... men to feel like they don't have a place in Western society. And he actually makes that point. I just think when you don't want to outright condemn 10th century barbarians like the Taliban, mm. you tend to lose your case with more moderate people. But again, we're not his target audience. The fact that his, why, his, you know, his understanding about what's happening in Afghanistan is that, that it's a feminist issue rather than mm. a human I issue. I don't think he yeah. said that. Well, no, he did. He said, send this feminist in. It's a human issue where we made all these promises to people in Afghanistan and then we left. Well, let's be clear, let's be clear. We betrayed those women. We absolutely right? betrayed Joe, Biden. Joe As a Biden, human being. In the way we completely. pulled out of Afghanistan overnight, and we betrayed not we, only people who work with us, the interpreters and yeah. so on, but, people but we who have died left millions, for millions of Afghan women yeah. have just been tossed back to these barbaric And servicemen who, who died for it. But the fact that, that he sees it, he says, oh, it's got nothing to do with me. As a human being, it yeah. should have something to do with it. As someone who says he's a No, I agree. Great, it should I have thought he was a cop out there. But albeit, again, a lot of what he says, I could imagine if I was a young man, it would resonate with me, yeah. probably for the right reasons. I think he's trying to give people confidence and a belief that being masculine is not actually a stick to beat thing. you with, Absolutely. right? You can be a good masculine person. He used to be applauded. Seeing Pierce Morgan, not penis Morgan, seeing him defending Andrew Tate, it seems like they have formed yet the weirdest and the most unlikely relationship. That's like seeing a rhinoceros kissing a giraffe. Now, Andrew Tate, was not even on the panel, and yet he still won and destroyed that feminist. Now, I wanna show you guys this video on how feminism will not work in the world today. Now, before I show you guys the video, let me just say this. My dick is like a feminist because the way it sticks up for women. In today's society, given evolution, given the fact that as women we can You're go and get, men. yeah, but I'm I'm not saying that. Isn't there a glitch between what is actually happening and the nature of what we have in our bodies? I think that's probably the conflict that we're having right now. Glitch in what way? In the sense that women don't feel like they need men in the most physical sense, we, perhaps yeah, that's like right. natural. It's actually a very interesting thing. I'll make a point here, which is going to get me cancelled again. But I don't give a fuck. <laughs> but, but, but this is the point. Feminism.
Marxism in and of itself can't be defended. Any idea, the point of an idea is that it can be defended by the people who believe in it. This has been the whole point of war since the dawn of time. It doesn't matter if it was the Christians against the Hindus. It doesn't matter if it was the Germans against the French. There were people who had ideas and ideologies, and they were prepared to fight each other to defend their ideology. Feminism is an ideology which cannot be defended by feminists. The only people who could defend feminism are the men who subscribe to the garbage. If, you, if all the feminists were to get in a, in, a, in a line and say, we want feminism, and the conservative men were to get in a line, you would learn very quickly it's bullshit. I had a friend in Afghanistan when Taliban kicked America out, and he told me the Americans were, tell, were telling the girls they could go to school. So they built all these girls' schools, and they put the Afghanistani defense forces there, and they get funded the Afghani defense forces to, to, to protect these schools. You had American satellites. You had night vision goggles. Taliban were afraid to attack. America leaves. Now you have Afghani defense forces. They're basically blind. They don't have satellites anymore. Don't have, don't have uh, night vision, whatever. So now it's a real war. The men are standing next to this girl's school. The Taliban are coming. You're some dude. You're standing there, and you're looking at this girl's school going, I don't really give a fuck if girls go to school. Bounce. And you just and you didn't fight. So that's why they all gave up, and Taliban took over so quickly. And when I said this, the girl's like, yeah, they should have fought for us, feminism. The, why don't the women fight? Can I ask? Oh, wait, the women can't defend their own fucking idea. You need men to defend feminism. So that's why the whole thing is stupid. <laughs> so the second men don't defend it, it, does, it just fails as a fucking ideology. It's garbage. With that being said, that concludes today's video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And if you guys really enjoy the content and want to support, don't forget to hit the thank you button. Now, before I end this video, let me show you guys this bonus clip. Called shake weights. Parody? You Never. were demonstrating. Is it better to go slow yeah. or better to go fast? Just a um, question. I think you, you kind of vary it. You got a course. small white one. Weird. Does that make a difference? <laughs> uh, no, actually, you know what? I don't think, I don't actually think it's the size of it. It's uh, actually the technique and how you do it. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, but thank you so much for asking that. I'm no, sure a yeah. lot of, of men at home were wondering that as well. Not Chris, because he, no. he told me he had the big black one.